Hi, uh, today is September 29th, 2011, and right, what I'm going to do today is go over another uh, finding I had for, uh, and, and then some um, um, of, uh, of the Anthony Pope family uh, that uh, immigrated from Prussia to, I believe, Prussia over to um, eventually ended up in, in McCracken County, Kentucky. Now there were there was a, a later generation of of poets that I may have even mentioned before in another presentation, but um, that generation is actually uh, I, I'm going back two generations further and a little bit further than that. So I'm kind of, I'm quite happy with the results I've been able to get the, uh, of the little that I've been able to do. Um, I think in another presentation I covered when the um, Englert family had come over and that'd be Philip Englert and his wife Thecla Rudolph. Well, Christine Englert, one of the daughters married Matthew Pote, and so I wanted to resolve up uh, just when Matthew Pote's immigration took place, and um, from there I, I was able to work back a little bit, and there's, uh, it, it seems just, it just seems from my vantage point, it's really pushing the envelope to go back so far, but uh, I've been fortunate enough to find a few records that I feel justified to at least mention it. Uh, to explain how I've arrived at my conclusions and uh, pretty much say, yeah, I think this is this is a match. Now, basically, to start out here, we um, I've been able to to <laughs> to pretty well um, figure out what happened to the family of Matthew Pope and Christine Engler, and I've been working up to this point. There's a son of his called Anthony Pope that. Um, Mary's a Mary Catherine, Catherine Hazley, which I've also found her arrival to this country, um, and <laughs> at one point, and um, she came from. They came from Geep, Switzerland. I hope I did a presentation on that. I'll have to recheck, see what I've done, what I haven't. And um, so basically, here's the family group chart. In the Windows version here, maybe it'll come up sharper. Maybe a reason to do that. Um, okay, so here's Matthew Pote. It's hard to read, but whatever. Here's his wife Christine. Basically, I got exact birth, marriage, and death dates and burial dates. Well, not burial dates. I'm approximating those. I know where they're buried, so but I don't have you know death certificate to say when they were buried. I probably should change those to a few days later, but no big deal. But that's getting into too much detail. And here's Anthony. Here Murray's uh Mary Catherine Hazley, and it turns out I've come to find out that the, the last name was, at the end of the day, spelled H-E-E-S-E-L-E-Y. -E these are the different sorts of pieces of information I have as sources, such as the gravestone, death certificate, what censuses they appeared with the parents, unless I say on their own next to it, or and certain statements that were made either by the Diocese of Owensboro or, or what have you. So, of the children, there were a total of ten that I have here. But there are quite a few that I don't know what happened to them ultimately. There's one, two, three, four, five. I really don't know if they married, and if they did, who they married, where they're buried, things of that nature. And I think it's because the family initially went to Graves County, Kentucky, and I'm not as well versed with Graves County, but this isn't the focus. Basically, I have this base, and with this base, what I do have is exact birth and death dates for, and marriage date for Christine Engler and for Matthew Pote, and I have a very good idea of what his, their children were. Now, the first document that I want to point to, and this is, again, this is a very important piece of information as a part of this. Um, God, I hope I didn't do this presentation before, but I don't think I've done it, or I may have done a, a later version of it. Um, so here is, again, there's a book that was released by the Roman Catholic Diocese of Owensboro, and it's partially available at Google Books. 
And if you know how to use screenshot programs, you can select certain portions of the page and end up with printing something out. Looks like you actually had a copy of the book. But no, <laughs> I don't. And this is probably a much larger print than what comes out. And there's a section on page 312 of which I made parts of columns as large as this page. And it starts out by saying that the Graves County tax list of 1841 has you know, Anthony Pote there. And then there's an Anton Pote um, living with a Madeline with the last name Welker. And as far as the, the source of that last name, Welker, uh, this is the only spot that I, the only place that I get that from. I'm, I'm trusting that the churches uh, had church records and that that information uh, has been extracted from church records. If my memory serves me right. And then also, you know, the, uh, the children Barbara, Madeline, John, and then a Margaret Kahn, age 74, presumed to be the mother of the mother. And then there was, um, then there were other three other children that were baptized, uh, the three children that said were listed as being born in Kentucky and baptized at St. John's, and this probably was probably by Father Peter Durbin, or one of the early people. And then it goes down to the later history, Matthew Poe and Christian Engler. Okay, so I hadn't really found much about um, this, this eldest, Anthony Pote, who really was the immigrant ancestor, and I hadn't sorted out when he had arrived. I mean, it's it's clear that he was here before 1841, but I'll try to give a, a, a better look. And the only reason why I'm in Windows now is because I could not only do searching, uh, I'm going to cover these two people, Anthony Starnes and Catherine, said to be Cheryl later on. But uh, now I'm doing Poach. And I, I, I love this older version, so I'm sticking this older version to Family Tree Maker. Okay, so. Basically, it turns out that looking through records and the way they read, I'm more convinced that the name of Anthony Pote's wife was Adeline. And I may retract my statement that Welker was just from, uh, possibly from church records, I'm assuming. That's why I've accepted it. Um, otherwise, um, <laughs> and there is one logical inconsistency, and it may be that her last name was not Welker. I'm not sure. So I just give you an idea. So I, I went in and I got a basic set of information here from um, Anthony Pope's census records, which were basically 1850 and 1860 censuses, and I had already followed through on Matthew Pope. Um, some, and then I just listed other people that appeared. And so what I usually do is I mark it, you know, after 1860, if the latest record I've seen is 1860. And between the two years, so up to 1850, I saw all these children up to John Pote. And then after 1860, I saw a number of children that were there before with the additional children of Mary Susan and Benjamin. Let's just check that out. Once again, just to be sure. So here I have the scope of what I got here. Basically, okay, so we have an 1880 census, and we have, this is Matthew Pope, actually, oh, this is the Matthew Pope pack. Not sure, the Anthony Pope pack, so I'm not sure. So here is the 1860 census, so we have an Anthony and an Adeline, and I'm sure this is the census they were talking about, no, this is not the census they are talking about, the John, a Mary, and a Susan, but the next one I'm going to show you, I'm sure, is the one they were talking about, here it is, it's listed as Anthony Port. His first appearance here is in the 1850 census that I could see clearly. And there's a Madeline, which they called Madeline Walker, a Barbara, a, a daughter that's a Madeline, a John, and then a Margaret Cohen, age 74. Okay. Um, right, so we're talking about the same family. And the... the, the Diocese of Owensboro doesn't go out so far as to say that um, th these are the same. This is the same family, but I have determined that it is because I've seen Matthew living with Anthony. I believe. <laughs> I 
maybe he was out of the house before. Yeah, he was married before 1850. So, no, I haven't seen them together in the same census. So, you know, the first question is, well, how do I draw this conclusion? And I'll get to that. I'll call myself. Okay, so, and that's where it is, this passenger list. So, what I looked for, because I had a hell of a time finding this, but I finally did, and that they came through Le Havre, France, if that's how you pronounce it, I think it is, is no surprise. So what elements do we have on here that, that gives me some comfort this is the same set of people? Well, getting back to this, through the through all the amalgamation of census records, you first you're going to notice that only the first two children of this <coughs> Anthony Poe and his wife Adeline were, were born in Prussia, and then the first child was born in Graves County in 1837. Now, presumably that they were married prior to the, the birth of the first child, and so, you know, the archdiocese wouldn't have any record of that marriage. And looking here, you know, there's a six-year gap, and so I had, uh, I knew that I was looking for a time range between 1831 and 1837. Now, her, uh, the record of... <coughs> Uh, the birth date, the birth year for Barbara here comes from her death certificate in McCracken County. She died in 1919, so death certificate is available. And let's see if we can find that. Uh, she'd be number three. Now, I didn't know about this Barbara. I had actually... <laughs> didn't learn about her until later, but it makes a good part of the presentation to make a point, uh, to make my point anyway. I didn't have the benefit of having her. I had Matthew, and I think I might have had Mary, and I may have had Adeline or John. But this this will help make the argument. So, she ended up marrying a man named, according to the researchers that posted their findings at Roots Web. I have it wrong. No, I don't. I just haven't put that in there yet. She ended up marrying a man named, um, the last name Hargrove. Now, here is her death certificate. And all it says is there's no record of the father. <coughs> so, all the Pope didn't know who <coughs> Barbara Pote's parents were. Okay. I accepted their finding that Barbara was the son of Anthony, but didn't have any basis for it yet, but I looked for a record on that basis. But I knew I had a Matthew. And I knew I had... No, I didn't even know I had a Matthew. I had assumed I had a Matthew. And I had given the Archdiocese of Owensboro a lot of weight, uh, and assuming this was the same family. I did have a John he was actually born in Kentucky, so that wouldn't help me with the passenger list. Mary, Susan, and Benjamin. And then the 1860 census, I had, I did have a Barbara, uh, age 11, 1850 census, sorry. <coughs> so I had a Matthew, who I'd assumed was the, <coughs> the daughter. I didn't know about Mary. And uh, so I just had Matthew and Barbara. Basically, and I knew that Matthew was born in Prussia, and Barbara was, and that's a, we got like a, almost a 10 year range there, which to find a passenger was. So they came over <laughs> between 18, October 1828 and 22nd February 1837, presumably. Let's get back to this Barbara Poe who married Hargrove. Uh, let's go over his death record. And this is just, this, this, this I've you know I haven't really proved out Barbara Hargrove first. I've accepted the other people's research, which looked pretty well researched. <coughs> but this is going to be part of the whole thing. I did see a Barbara inside the, the census record, though, so I knew approximately what year she was born. And in the 1850 census, she had said that she was of age 11. I'm hesitating because that would be. 1839, right? That's like two years. She would have been actually two years older than what's said here, right? Is it a mistranscription? 
No, but I also noticed that right next door to Anthony there, if you can see it, is Martin living right near him uh, with the wife Christina, which is now I now know is Christina Hazley, and their son Anthony Pope, which is the line I was following up. Um, so I had a pretty big range, and that was 1839, but she puts this Barbara here, puts her birth as in Kentucky. All right, but I have a Matthew always saying he was born in Prussia, living next door, probably a recipient of land from his father. And I bet you if I looked at the 1840 and did some analysis, I could probably say they were living in the same household. Okay, so I have a pretty good setup here. The only problem with the record that I've found, of course, is that it actually places Barbara's birth not in Graves County, Kentucky, but in Prussia um, seven months prior, six and a half months prior. Because their arrival date was in 4 September 1837, and guess what? I don't have it. <coughs> I don't actually don't have Barbara on the list. So Barbara um, was born. That's how I concluded. She's born in Graves County, Kentucky. She says uh, on her um, death certificate, if this is you know, assuming this is the right one, that she was born in Kentucky, but she was not on the boat. But for her to say that she was born February 22nd, 1836, couldn't be, since the family arrived in 1837. She was probably born in 1838. I'm going to change that right now, actually. Okay, um, Okay. so what, what do I got here? I've got a story of a... Um, Madeline... On. I probably should have the Pike's Archdiocese story here. Oh, the story of an Anthony living with a um, wife, Madeline, and then all the children, Barbara, Madeline, and John, 38, 45, and 48, baptized at St. John's. Right, there's 38. Okay, so she was actually born not in 36, but 38. If this is the same person. And the census where they took her and had her age, I, I'm putting a lot of weight on what the Archdiocese is saying, assuming it has church records. Uh, her saying that she was born in 1839, now that's closer to reality there. And she placed herself in Kentucky, right? Let's go back to the passenger list. Now, they're with them, with, um, in this 1850 census, again, mentioned, also mentioned by the Archdiocese, was this Madeline. Well, you say Madeline. And then a Margaret Kahn at the bottom there. That, that, that was my point. Margaret Kahn. I'm not sure if <coughs> did, <coughs> I have, you know, you can't see it up close, but you know, she's born in Germany. <coughs> okay, so let's go over this. We have here on this passenger list a Margaretha. They've called Pote. Right? She was with the Pote party, but she's got Kahn later on. But I've got her here, and I've assumed that the last name is Welker, so it's okay if her name was Con originally, as long as she married a Welker, there's your Welker. There's 1776, there's a birth date of about 1777. Okay, then we, get an, then we have an Anton, and then we have something listed as a Helena, and this is spelled P-O-T-T. -T. This is a little harder to find, too. So let's look at the actual record, and let's see what... <coughs> what it looks like. <clears throat> now there is a Madeline. And in later senses, she was an Adeline. Let's go over here. 
Adeline, 1860. Now, the guy taking names of people as they get on a boat might hear Adeline and decide it's Helena or Helen. Let's look at let's look at the ages. So it's got a Peter, an Anton Poe, and a Helena, an Anton. That helped me find this because he was going by Anton on that earlier census. Let's look at the ages. We have Anthony Pote, who was actually born um, in later census. He gives his age as early his year of birth is being as early as 1799. This one's got 1801. That one here, he's got himself as age 51, which would make that 1799 in that case. We've got uh, 1803, so the, this is saying that the, uh, the age on the list was 34. Let's see, do we have that? Well, this is saying 36, what I could see, not... Okay, and there's your Helena, there's your Margaret, then there's two others. A Matthias and a Maria. Well, there's your there's your Matthew and there's your Maria. Bingo, we found we've got the right one. These these are the same people. I mean the only the only real question is is, you know, why does Adeline not match up with Helena? Well, that could easily have been mistranscribed. So I found that record. And that helped me work my way forward. And so I could place all these things. Again, this past year list acts somewhat as a census. It's as if I have a detailed census from 1837. I haven't dived into the, the 1840 census yet to place people, so I really just got this far. And then this one is indexed as port. I had trouble finding it originally, but eventually I did. And then I was able to use these are the same people that were on that boat with about the same ages. And then I just added the additional people and I was able to build from there. Um, and that's it. Now there's a couple of other interesting piece of information um, in addition to all this. So I'm going to go up a little further. So now we've got, this is their family group sheet for right now, an unknown Welker and Margaret Kahn. And I have, I have, I know when she died, <laughs> which I'm actually, I'm actually amazed. So this, uh, again, this Anthony Pote is a, a grandfather to a great grandmother. And we're talking about his grandparents and great grandparents which is absolutely amazing in my mind. So, um, there's, uh, let's go up here. So all I have so far in this this family is this group, but I do have an exact data depth for, for Margaret there, which actually goes even farther, and I got his name, Frederick Kahn, and wife, Kalia, because I have her death certificate, her death record, not death certificate. And it appears up here at the top. Unfortunately, I don't know what it reads exactly, but it says Margaret Kahn, white, female, time of death, May 20th, I suppose, and uh, cause of death, I can't read it, it gives the parents uh, Frederick and I can't even read it, someone transcribed it, it's so small. Um, Kalia. Of course, I don't know their exact births and death dates, but birth date 1776, died uh, 20 May 1856, and she's in Graves County somewhere, and I presume that she's going to be buried in the same place that her daughter Barbara was, was buried. 
uh, her granddaughter Barbara, and I'm going to assume that Anthony Poe and Adeline Walker were also buried there when they were in Graves County. And I bet you when I look in Graves County, I'm going to find out more about Mary Pote, John Pote, the second Mary. This first one probably died before 1850. That's why they re would rename them. Um, but this Barbara here, as far as I remember, they, they say... Um, tons of records here, and I've only just started to scratch the service. They were in, what, for a while, Marshall County, but I think they said where she was buried. Bethlehem Church. So I'm going to try to see if I can get transcriptions of the Bethlehem Church Cemetery, wherever that is. And my bet is going to be that I'm going to find a lot more detail about this family of Anthony Pope and Medellin Welker and be able to develop that further. So that's basically what I found about uh, Anthony Pope. That's where I'm at right now. And I'm going to stop here, then I'm going to go on to the Starns because they're, they're, they're interesting and there's a lot of people doing a lot of good hard work on it.